How to stop coffee from spiking your blood sugar in the morning? Yes, today we are talking about how to really stop that coffee problem in some cases, right? If they have high caffeine and that caffeine really spikes your blood sugar, isn't it? It does. Hi, I'm Dr. Ahmed Ergin, guys, and I'm a hormone specialist, and I am an endocrinologist uh, with great passion in treating diabetes. Now, if you are a type of person like my wife, who cannot even open her eyes, really, without drinking a cup of uh, coffee, but then if you hate to check your blood sugar an hour later because you know it will be going up, right? So, if you are checking your blood sugar, most of you will realize that. Now, today we are learning about how really coffee spikes the blood sugar, but also how to put an end to it, okay? So, what real effect does caffeine have on your blood sugar to begin with? Let's talk about this. Now, a growing body of evidence suggests that people with type 2 diabetes react differently to caffeine. Not, not every one of you will have a spike in your blood sugar, but it can cause blood sugar spikes and it can cause insulin spikes in people with diabetes. Now, if you are one of those who have a very little insulin reserve left, your body may not be able to compensate for the rising blood sugars due to coffee simply because your body cannot, right? So, for example, in one study, people with type 3 diabetes were given 250 milligram of caffeine pill. Yeah, it's a pill, not real coffee. You know, it's not, it's a study, right? At breakfast, and another one at lunch. Now, that's roughly equivalent to drinking like two cups of coffee with each meal. As a result, their blood sugars actually were 10% higher than on the days when they did not consume the caffeine. So the days they consumed the caffeine, their blood sugars were at least 10% higher. Now, their reading also increased after each meal. So post-meal numbers were high. This is due to the fact that the caffeine can actually alter how your body reacts to insulin by raising your adrenaline levels, which is a hormone that prevents insulin from doing its job fully. They're basically creating a short-term or a temporary insulin resistance in your body in the mornings. Actually, your body naturally makes these hormones more in the morning, which is why your blood sugar may start to rise even without eating. But if you drink coffee, you will just amplify that hormone response that naturally happens, and you will create a real mess, right? Oh well, it tastes good, right? What can you do? Well, there's some things you can do I'll tell you about. So. We're gonna give you some tips to stop your blood sugars from rising due to these nasty hormones. Well, they're not nasty, they're helpful, but sometimes they get in the way. Remember, this is the same hormone along with the cortisol that go up when you're stressed out, so the adrenaline and the cortisol. So if you're wondering why your blood sugars are averaging higher on the days that you're most stressed out, now you know why. Now, caffeine also inhibits the activity of an important protein, we call that adenosine. This molecule has a significant impact on how much your body makes insulin, okay? So, a lack of adenosine results in high blood sugar. Now, how much coffee does it take to really cause a high blood sugar then? Well, it only takes 200 milligrams of caffeine to have an effect on your blood sugar. That is roughly one or two cups of brewed coffee or three or four cups of black tea. You might be able to tolerate more or less caffeine and different people may react differently to the caffeine. You know, it works almost like a drug. But uh, your reaction is determined by factors such as your age, your weight, etc. And then your genetics, how you metabolize the caffeine. The amount of caffeine you consume on a regular basis may also play a role because you will be more used to it. Now, people with diabetes who drink coffee on a regular basis may not have that higher blood sugar levels than those who do not drink coffee every morning. We also believe that your body really adapts to the amounts of caffeine over time. So, the other research also says that, for example, the caffeine can still spike your blood sugar even if you start your day with just a single cup of coffee. Now, you know caffeine is a problem, but you're not really willing to give up on the coffee, do you? Just because I said so? I thought so. <laughs> I will give you some solution, because I know you will not give up on your coffee, but you will probably benefit from that, and I don't think you have ever heard these before. You'll probably feel like you're a coffee expert at the end of this video, 
Well, you might say, I will just use a decaf coffee, whatever, but the problem with that approach is that the first thing is that it's hard to find decaf coffee, number one. It's hard to find a decaf coffee with a good aroma and taste that you're looking for every time. Unless you don't really care about how your coffee tastes, that's a different story. I do. Uh, it is more expensive also, and you will not get that jolt you're asking for when you wake up. Maybe you're looking for something in between, right? It's always, it's good to have something in between. Here's how to achieve that. At the end of this video, I will give you also a few clinical tricks about what to do with your medications if you do not want to become a coffee expert or if you're not willing to change the way you drink coffee. You know, I have a lot of patients like that. They don't want to change anything in their life. That's okay. It's a style, right? So hear me out. You may be surprised to hear what you're going to hear today. Now, number one. Make use of less ground coffee. That's no brainer, right? Basically, the more ground coffee you use, the more caffeine there will be in your brew. Now, if you normally use a tablespoon of coffee per six ounces of water, experiment with using a little less and see if you like the taste and if you can live with that strength of the coffee. Now, number two, always stick to Arabica, Arabica beans, right? Simply avoid the Robusta coffee beans. Now, coffee arabica and coffee robusta are the two most widely cultivated commercial coffees. Now, arabica is by far the more popular of the two, accounting around like 75 to 80 percent of the global production. Now, as a general rule of thumb, the caffeine content of robusta beans are twice, twice the arabica beans. As a result, I would say stick to Arabica and just say no to any kind of Robusta beans, okay? Not only will this drastically reduce your caffeine intake, but you will also be drinking a far superior cup of coffee. Now, also avoid the low cost, sometimes unavoidable, right? Sometimes some of us cannot afford it, but low cost, low quality blends that are commonly found in supermarkets and wholesale markets, they are generally mixed with Robusta bean fillers. So when purchasing fine European blends even, keep in mind that the Robusta beans are frequently used. Remember to look for 100% Arabica, 100% Arabica coffee, okay? Now, some espresso blends also use high quality Robusta beans and make certain that your espresso is also made entirely with the Arabica beans. Well, you guys like this video so far? I know you do because you're sticking around, right? Well, smash that like button and say something in the comment section below and subscribe if you have not done already yet. Number three, make your own caffeine-free blend. How do you make that? Well, to make your own unique low caffeine blend, you can combine a fully loaded 100% Arabica beans with decaf beans, right? So if flavor and aroma are more important to you than the caffeine content, use a one-to-one -one ratio and use like one-to-two ratio if the caffeinated to decaffeinated ratio, for example, if you want a low caffeine content, but you don't mind the taste going away a little bit, right? So the caffeinated versus decaffeinated ratio you can, you can play with. Here is a tip for you as well. For the best flavor, combine coffees that complement each other. For example, blend a distinctive full-bodied regular Arabica coffee, such as Kenya, Yemen mocha, or Sumatra, or Guatemala, with a mild decaffeinated coffee, such as Costa Rican or Colombian, for example. Like, you can just mix and match. Number four, adjust the ground level of your coffee. Assuming the brewing method remains constant, the finer the grind of the coffee, the more caffeine it will release. So we can take advantage of this fact by grinding the coffee a little coarser to reduce the caffeine in our brew, right? So just be careful not to grind the coffee too coarse or you will end up with under extracted brew that tastes like dishwater. Number five, experiment with a darker roast. Now coffee beans like dark roast contain slightly less caffeine than the lighter roast when measured by volume, like we call this blonde roast, right? The, the lighter ones. If you're measuring by scoop, of course. 
So I'll tell you what, when coffee beans are roasted, two interesting things happen. Number one, they lose the water content about 20% give or take, and they swell in size. As a result, we end up with coffee beans that are lighter in weight but larger in size. So if you use a scoop to measure your coffee and it's a dark roast, you will find fewer beans in the scoop because they are expanded during the roasting process. There will also be less caffeine per scoop due to the presence of those fewer beans, right? Voila, you're good to go. Number six, I would say play around with instant coffee if you haven't done so. Instant coffee is made with brewing coffee beans and then freeze drying the water content. As a result, you will have a concentrated instant powder. Now, simply mix this powder with a glass of hot water to make something that some people may say resembles coffee, right? So if you're a big coffee fan, you may definitely rule that out, but it is something to consider if you want to reduce the caffeine content. The caffeine content of the instant coffee is generally lower than the regular brew. Now, in fact, instant coffee contains roughly pretty much half the caffeine of the filtered brewed coffee on a cup for cup basis. Now, 1.8 grams of instant coffee, for example, is equivalent to about one round of tablespoon, which contains 57 milligram of caffeine, according to USDA. Now, number seven, keep an eye on the brewing time. Now, what we believe is to be true sometimes is not always true, right? One such phenomenon is that the widespread belief is that a shot of espresso, for example, contains more caffeine than the other types of coffee. Not really. The longer you brew the coffee, the more caffeine there is in your beverage of choice. So, espresso means it's express, right? <laughs> it's fast. The way it is made, it prevents it from retaining a lot of caffeine, unless they use a lot of Robusta in it, right? We talked about. So, if you want to limit your caffeine intake, drink an espresso or French press coffee before considering a drip brewed coffee. Here's my favorite piece of advice also. To make an Americano, you can order a single shot of espresso, which contains around only 50 to 64 milligrams of caffeine per ounce. And then you can add four to five ounces of hot water and add some, you know, cream, etc., and serve it in a mug. You will save yourself a lot of caffeine and a nice coffee. Number eight, experiment with cold brewed coffee. Who knew that, right? Cold brew is created by soaking the coffee grinds in room temperature water overnight. The next day, you strain the coffee, concentrate, and then store it in the refrigerator for like up to two weeks. That also makes it a very practical drink, right, in the mornings? Cold brewed coffee is a very mild brew. It contains approximately 30% less caffeine than the traditional drip brewed coffee. Also, it is very low in acid. In fact, it contains 70% less acid than the hot coffee, which may help your stomach. This method is used by a large number of people, and they love it. Give it a shot and let us know what you think. Well, here are the clinical tips that I promise to talk about. If you don't want to deal with any of that, and you're set on your ways, and you will not change anything the way I said, you're going to be like, whatever. Well, then here's a couple tips for you. If you are an early riser, why don't you take your coffee with you and go for a morning walk, right? Instead of just sitting around and watching news. Walking for sure will help prevent that blood sugar spike. Now, if you're stubborn and you don't want to go anywhere or you don't want to walk and then you'll be like, okay, I'm not going to do it, right? I'm not going to force you. Well, then what you can do is just have a high protein breakfast that will slow down the absorption of anything that includes the coffee. And if you take your medication early on also, it will help. That will reduce the sudden blood sugar spike when you are having high protein, high fat breakfast. Now, if these two approaches fail, then your medications can play a little bit more role. If you're already taking insulin, for example, you can drink your coffee early in the morning, right? And then you're not having your breakfast for a while, like an hour or so, a lot of people do that. Well, then I would suggest taking that fast acting insulin right with your coffee instead of waiting right before the breakfast. Because you know your blood sugar is going to go up, right? You know that your blood sugar goes up after coffee. What's the point of waiting for another hour to see that your blood sugar is already 200 before breakfast? 
If you're not on insulin, but the above scenario that I talked about applies to you, well then, some of you may be taking some sulfonylurea drugs, although they're not my favorite medications by any means, but you know, they're, they're cheap and people take it anyways. Then you can take these nasty meds you uh, take anyways, right? Instead of uh, right before the breakfast, just take it like with your coffee, just like insulin, you know, just take it early on and let it run and it will help you bring your blood sugars down. So guys, I hope that helps your coffee dilemma and I hope coffee never spikes your blood sugar again. I hope you remember me every time you drink your coffee. Guess what? We'll have more videos, more to come. Subscribe, save. We'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this channel so far and I hope you subscribed already. If you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.